Okay, so in this video, we will be showing you how to get up and running using the Python client. So the Python client will allow you to use the Python programming language with your GridDB cluster. So first we need to install the C client and then we'll go ahead and install the Python client and uh, maybe do a small walkthrough of some code. So first let's get that C client. So you can get that from GitHub. Um, they actually released an RPM recently, so that makes it much easier to get up and running. Okay, so that should install into our user directory. Okay, perfect. So that's there and ready to go. Okay, and now to make sure that the Python client is up and running, we just need to follow the instructions on the GitHub page. So first we need to install Swig. So we can just copy and paste the commands from there and make sure that we get everything up and running. You might have to run sudo for these make commands here. Okay, and then next we need to grab swig itself. So once again, just copy and paste the commands from the GitHub. Okay, so now that those are done, next step is to set your paths. So the first thing is we need to tell our machine where the C client directory is. So you would just copy this command. Obviously the path is relative to your machine. So this is how it is on mine. Do this. And then you need to tell it where the Python client is. So I'm also gonna do that. And then you also need to point to where those bin files I showed you from the C client. You need to do that as well. This. And that should be it. Actually, sorry, apologies. I just realized that I never made the Python client. So let's do that. So let's just change it to the Python client. We do a make. So if you have no issues, it should just create a new file here. But. If you do have issues, you will hopefully solve them. So here it's showing that it cannot find the L grid store. So if you get this error, you can just edit your make file. Um, so the issue here is you need to point to the C client location. So uh, you need to point to here. So here I just added the path to my C client bin and that should hopefully solve this issue. So now I'm trying to make again, and successful, good. All right, so next up we're gonna look at an actual program. So we'll just walk through this together step by step. So first, um, here we're importing the necessary libraries for the program. So here we're importing GridDB, and then we also got system and time. So time obviously is for the time series container. And then we um, need to feed in our credentials for our GridDB cluster. So here we're just using all default options. And then here, more interestingly, is uh, we're creating the schema, basically. So we're going to create two containers for this. We're going to create a collection container and then the time series container. So here in our collection container, it'll just be a person with the name and age here. And um, here you can see we're setting it as collection container. And then we're gonna also going to create a time series container which will have the timestamp as a row key. And this will be tracking the heart rate of the person. Um, and then it'll have a string here. So you can see here that um, we set it as time series. 
Okay, so first we'll be putting data into our time series container and then querying that and then doing the same with collection and then showing you the results. So we're just going to keep it very simple. We're going to input, we're going to insert into our uh, time series container. So we're going to use the current time as a time, which is pretty standard for IoT. Um, we're going to have some dummy data. So we're going to have a heart resting heart rate of 60 beats per minute, which is uh, pretty good, probably lower than me. <laughs> Um, so here we're just going to run a simple query. So the query will um, do for a timestamp from six hours ago to now. So basically all the data we put in will be returned here. So this is what a query would look like. So next we actually run the results. So this is exactly what it looks like. And then we print that out to show you. Okay. And then next up it's going to be the collection container. So here we're setting the index of the row key column to name. And then we're setting um, an index on the column for age here. And then we're just going to do the same thing, put some dummy data into our container. So here our person is John and he's 30. Um, very simple query. Select where name is John. It looks very much like SQL. And then we execute the query here. So we'll also print that out so you can see what it looks like. And then down here is a uh, catching all our errors. So let's take a look at what it would look like. So we'll just run this and it'll have all the data I did while trying to prepare for this video. So here we go. Everything works just as expected. So that's everything. So we will include all the necessary information on the description down below. Links and links to the code and links to the website and things like that. Thank you for watching. Have a good one.